My name is Colin Angel. I'm the co-founder, CEO, and chairman of iRobot. And uh, here at iRobot, uh, we're on, the mi on a mission to create practical robots to help people in their everyday lives. We founded iRobot back in 1990 based on the idea that it was about time that robots became a real part of our lives and not just something we saw in movies or read about in books. And so our idea was to try to find robots that we could create at a reasonable price that could deliver concrete value to people's lives on a daily basis. In the early days, iRobot mostly did research and development uh, for large multinational corporations or worked on research projects for uh, labs around the world. Over time, we, the technology got to the point where we could start focusing on real, on real applications, like robots to go down into oil wells and uh, stimulate production to allow for greater recovery of oil from a, a given underground formation. Or robots that could go clean supermarkets or airports. Uh, we also worked on robots to uh, diffuse uh, mines that might be in the ground. And robot toys. So we did a lot of things. In 2002, 12 years after the founding of the company, we did two things that changed the company's history. Uh, the first was we sent robots uh, into field to help defuse bombs uh, for the US military in Iraq and Afghanistan. Secondly, we launched the Roomba, the uh, world famous small vacuuming robot. And from those months in 2002 to today, the company has grown very, very rapidly. iRobot is, is different from your typical high-tech company, frankly, because we build robots. We, we believe that technology is not a, just about computer screens and software and making uh, interesting data programs. We believe that there is great economic value creating physical, intelligent machines that can help us on our daily lives, whether that be mundane tasks like vacuuming or scrubbing the floor, or security tasks, all the way up to some of the work we do um, uh, with robots like this guy right here that can go and actually defuse bombs in the field. From a very early age, most, most people dream and think about robots they, they might build, robots that could do your homework, robots that uh, uh, <coughs> could clean up your room for you, robots that could uh, take you to other planets, and, and all sorts of wild ideas. That's led to many different companies and research labs creating technically marvelous, fantastic robots that have legs that can uh, go uh, walk upstairs, that can play the piano or play the flute. Uh, just marvelous technological masterpieces. What iRobot is doing is slightly different. We think that a robot that can actually save you time a robot that can do something that you would otherwise have to do in order to get through your, your average day is just as cool as a robot that can dance or, or play an instrument. In fact, much cooler. And so what makes us a very unusual robot company is the focus on practical problem solving. Vacuuming the floors isn't as exciting as some of the demonstration other, other robots have performed, and yet, if that robot vacuums my floor, I don't have to. And that's the essence of 
what type of robot is going to create a great business, and that is the way in which iRobot is trying to change the world for the better by creating these helpful machines. The, 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 the Roomba is an extraordinary robot. It's small, it's affordable, and it does its job vacuuming the floor incredibly well. And so the idea that I can spend a little bit of money on a machine that every day will wake up, vacuum my floors, plug itself in, and so I can come home from work every day to a cleaner house, that's a very compelling idea. And because it's affordable, it's something that is uh, makes this marvelous technology within reach of many, many people. And so uh, we're seeing situations where the robot is outselling regular vacuum cleaners uh, to a very exciting degree. This is suddenly because it actually works. People realize, well, why would I push an upright vacuum cleaner anymore? That's, that seems very uh, 20th century, and, and we've moved beyond. So it's exciting, it's having an impact, and we're seeing uh, sales and adoption really continue to take off. So our newest robot is the Roomba 700 series, and it marks a significant uh, step up from our prior uh, generations. Uh, we've added HEPA filtration. One of the uh, key things that you like with your Roomba is, is not just the clean floor, but making sure the air uh, quality that uh, um, in your home is also uh, incredibly high and actually improved by your vacuum cleaner. The Roomba 700 allows you to do that. Uh, we've also improved the performance, uh, the cleaning performance of the Roomba, so it picks up even more dust and, and dirt on your floor, especially on hard floors where vacuum cleaners are often very poor performers. On top of that, a better user interface, a, a indication that tells you when you need to empty the bin, so just by looking at the robot, you know, oh, it's time to, uh, time to empty it. Uh, improved battery system. So it's, it's a host of features that allow this robot to uh, <coughs> clean your floor even more reliably, even more effectively every day. In the home, we vacuum. We also have robots that will scrub your floor, clean your gutters, but that's not all iRobot does, and that's not the only place the world needs robots. Uh, we have robots like this PackBot, which have been used to go places that you and I would probably never want to go. 9-11 uh, <coughs> and New York City, where the World Trade Centers uh, were destroyed by terrorists, these robots went into the buildings around that disaster site to ensure that the buildings were structurally sound and that if there are any survivors, uh, that they could be rescued. These robots operate in Afghanistan and Iraq every single day looking for bombs, going up to them, using the technology on the robot to defuse the bombs, render them safe, and so that uh, operations can continue. And most recently, as a result of the earthquake in Japan and the resulting tsunami which destroyed the reactors at Fukushima, these robots were sent and are on the job today going into those radioactive buildings, cleaning up the dust, pulling out the debris, and working to reduce the radiation levels so that the cleanup can continue in this disaster uh, can be averted. So vacuuming your floor is great, but when the world has a real crisis, 
these uh, other products that we build uh, have been on the job and uh, saving lives uh, every day. The PackBot and its uh, smaller brother, the SUGV, are deployed in numbers in Afghanistan and Iraq. Their, their primary missions today have to do with bomb disposal, so that um, booby traps are put out along the road uh, to go uh, to kill soldiers as they drive by. Uh, now, with the help of these robots, a suspected booby trap uh, can be diffused and investigated by sending the robot over to that area, using the sensors on the robot to determine whether it's real a real threat or uh, just something that looks unusual. And then if it is a bomb, the robot can diffuse it or bring another block of C4 next to that bomb, move back and explode uh, that bomb in place, allowing the soldiers to continue. In other situations, the robot can go into a building before a soldier actually has to go into the building to see what's in it. This is a far better use uh, st or strategy than either throwing a grenade or having a soldier jump in the building and uh, worry about getting uh, immediately uh, shot at. So uh, those two applications are uh, incredibly important and the robot is at work every day uh, providing these services. The dream of a robot has, uh, is, is typically very intimately tied with trying to recreate a human. And that's okay, that's exciting, that's interesting, but it is not necessarily the best strategy if what you're trying to do is vacuum the floor or lift a weight or uh, clean up a nuclear disaster because there's a lot of complexity associated with trying to balance on your legs, trying to uh, walk in such a way that you don't uh, fall down, that uh, all of the different muscles in our body which add cost to the robot and are not necessary if you simply change the design and use wheels or tracks instead of legs. And so because we are the practical robot company, because our mission is to find solutions that people care about and use robot technology to go deliver a, a cost-effective way of getting that challenge done, we don't use legs. We use wheels. We use tracks. We use uh, rotary joints, things that Mother Nature never had in its arsenal to solve these problems. And as a result, our robots are more rugged, they're cost-effective, and they truly get the job done, because that is our mission. Other companies uh, <clears throat> may have different ideas about where they're going and, and how, um, and that's fine. But uh, we think that uh, robots exist to solve problems, not just to be cool. <laughs> iRobot is very committed to selling internationally because frankly, the need that our robots address is a global problem. Everybody has to deal with maintaining a clean home, uh, trying to figure out how to sweep or vacuum dust off the floor. This is not just something that, that happens in the United States. In fact, uh, there are many other cultures outside the U.S. which are probably even more focused on keeping the home clean. And so over 70% of our sales of Roomba happen outside of the U.S. <coughs> so we've organized our business to take advantage and partner 
with local companies who understand the market, understand the special needs of a, a different, a, a particular nation, and try to meet those needs, sell the robot, explain the robot in a way that uh, makes sense, and uh, as a result, uh, we've done very, very well.